Hey everybody, the video you're about to see is me catching a swarm, it actually wasn't a swarm, it was a hive of bees out of a barn uh, for a lady who called me, I had an ad running, and she has a high, she has a high living in her barn, and she needed them gone, uh, it's a horse barn, and it was causing problems. So she called me up and says, well, can you remove them? So I went out and checked out the job, and sure enough, I think I could do it. So that's in the video coming up. I wanted to explain and show you some of the tools I was using because I didn't really have time or want to take the time during the process of removing the bees to show you what was going on. So the first thing I want to show you, and probably one of the most important parts uh, to this process is getting the bees collected uh, to bring them home. And that only way to do that in a hive situation that you're removing because they're flying everywhere, they're crawling everywhere, is a vacuum system. Uh, I know it sounds comical, but it's true. So what I did is I just took a clear plastic you know, tote tub that you store stuff in. And this particular tub, what I liked about it, has a lip on all four sides uh, to set stuff, make a level. So what I did is I took a piece of plywood, half inch plywood, to fit the inside perimeter nice and tight without any gaps around it. And then I cut two inch, a two inch uh, strip all the way around out of it, took the center out, and nailed window screen on it. I really should be using aluminum window screen, but this is what I had on hand, so it's just what I used. Uh, it drops down and sits on this ledge down in there. It's pretty, pretty well sealed all the way around. This bar going across is to keep the sides plastic, you know, it's pretty flimsy, so I did that to stiffen it all the way around the perimeter. <clears throat> now on this end, I drilled a hole for a shop vac hose size, which is two and a quarter on a particular shop vac I use, and I made a plug, so when I get done vacuuming up the bees, I can take this and plug it off. The lid, which is right here, the hole that you stick your, your opposite vacuum hose into goes on the opposite side of the, the hose that you're sucking out of. So, for example, the hose that you're, you're using to do the vacuum of the bees goes on the right, let's say, and the opposite side goes on the left, which this then runs to the shop vac itself. Another important part that I found is where the lid sits on the plastic, it doesn't seal up real good. So I took some weather stripping, that's a sticky back weather stripping, and ran around the perimeter of the lid on the container itself. This sits on there. You just kind of, it just sits down. And when you start to vacuum, it actually sucks down a little bit, which creates the seal. Now, so what you would do is you would take your shop back. And uh, you would take the shop vac, you'd run the hose, it would be right here, out of the shop vac, into here, just a single hose. Then you take the, uh, another hose, another shop vac hose of the same size, into this hole on the opposite end, and you'd want a fairly long hose, I like about a 10 foot hose, or longer, just more convenient, whatever's the most convenient. And that's the end that you do your sucking of the bees. So how it works, and then I also cut a secondary hole for a flow control. Um, if your vacuum shop vac puts out too much suction, you can hurt the bees. And so you can use this secondary hole, show it this way too, uh, to regulate the amount of suction coming uh, through your hose by opening or closing this, this vent, basically. I found with this shop vac and this setup, I just leave it closed. I really didn't need a secondary hole. So how it works is the bees get sucked in. They hit that window screen in there. They can't go any further, but it disperses the air enough through that entire window screen that it doesn't hurt the bees at all, or very little. There's a few that were dead in the bottom, but very few. So that's the first tool that you've seen me, you, you will be seeing me use in the video, but I didn't take the time to explain it. Uh, Next is the, I run all top bar hives that I built. You see the one behind me. These are frames that I built and created that fit the inside dimension of my top bar hive. 
I did this so once I get the comb out of the wall, I can lay it on the table, lay this on it, and trace out with a knife this, dement this, this right here. Cut that, cut the comb to fit inside this. Then what you do is you take your some rubber bands and you actually physically rubber band the comb in place until the bees reattach it all the way around. So what that allows you to do is take their existing comb, drop it down in your, your hive, it fits in there perfectly, and they, on all that, the baby, the brood, the drones, it's not all going to waste. They can just keep on a trucking and rebuilding. So let's see, other than that, uh, please take a minute here, pause the video, and hit the like button. I really appreciate it. So, hope you enjoy the rest of the video, and thanks for watching. It's bee removal time. I was called by a landowner who has bees in the wall of their barn. They asked me if I would get them out and I could have them. So I don't want to tear off this big long pieces of siding. I mean, it's more work than I want to do. So if we walk to the inside of this horse barn, this is quite the barn. Very nice setup. Inside this first stall is plywood sheets. If I put my ear up to the plywood, I can hear the bees directly behind it. And that uh, floor joist bay there should be the top because they can't really go any higher than that. So I'm assuming the bees are in about that line right there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set up the tripod with the camera and we're going to start disassembling. We're going to pull this top sheet off. It's a full 8 foot sheet. And we may have to pull that uh, 6 foot sheet off right there. Hopefully we don't have to pull this other sheet off. If we do we'd have to uh, remove those hay feeders. So let me get the tripod set up and we'll start pulling nails. Okay, I got all the nails pulled out of the sheet. Now I just got to use the hammer and kind of pry it off. Got the bee suit on. You guys might want to get out of here once it starts because it could get, it could get busy. That's all honey. Oh, jeez. And I am dripping honey. <laughs> Oh, the hive isn't nearly. Oh, they got two different hives going. Interesting. You got nails on the top that's holding everything. Wait a minute, that's an old, old beehive. Stuck to the back side of this board, there's just lots of honeycomb. That's not a lot, but well, I better take care of it because it has bees all over it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mom. What I might do here before we go any further is I might set up the vacuum and bees and start. Well, actually, you guys set it up. They're not being aggressive, so. Which is really surprising. Connor, um, I'll we'll probably leave it right there. Got plenty of weight. All I need is this yeah. hose. Turn it on.
just gonna leave it running. Got a big ball of bees. This is where they would go in and out. They're all balled up now out here. Okay. <laughs> She's covered in honey. In her hair. <laughs> it's everywhere. Okay. Let's grab this big chunk of comb. This one. This big chunk of brood comb. Wow, it's a lot of weight. It's probably 10 pounds right there. You just washed a big guy. Okay, so what we'll do, look at all the bees stuck to the blade, is we'll trim this to fit. No, is this the green? No. Oh. Queens aren't black. They're pink. They're purple. You're dying, dude. Don't it's stuck in okay. Took a bite out of it. <laughs> a lot of that's capped nectar. What's that? That's what that comb is, is capped nectar. Um, is that good or bad? Well, we need some frames of it. Grab the rubber bands. Are the rubber bands even? Where are the rubber bands? Where are the rubber bands? They are, who are the rubber bands? Good question. Oh, I bet they got left at home. They were in that cardboard box. We really need to find the brood. I should get a bite out of Can that. Can we do this at home? That's yeah. not the good honey, Daddy. We need a bite of the good stuff. What's caps honey? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys could only taste this. Oh. It's dripping. That is like finger licking good. Oh. Mm. Oh my. Oh. Put on a ball of wax now. <laughs> you don't get any fresher than that. Uh, straight out of the comb. Oh, that's good. Okay, maybe yeah. we'll do some homes. We forgot the. Remember, it's Omar. Oh my. Oh my lord in heaven. Mm. So, are we going to have to run home? Well, we're headed home anyway. Let's get the plywood on. Yeah, you gotta put all the wall back together. We need this turned off now, white.